High tibial osteotomy HTO, is commonly performed for medial unicompartmental osteoarthritis and varus deformity, especially in younger, active patients. The knee joint is realigned by creating a wedge on the medial side of the tibia, allowing the weight-bearing axis to be shifted away from the damaged medial compartment. Full-length standing x-rays are used to assess alignment, and the correction angle is planned radiographically to offload the affected area. Pre-contoured to fit the tibia, reducing bending and soft tissue irritation. Variable angle screws provide for secure, adaptable fixation. Limited contact is designed to preserve blood flow and support healing. Tapered ends allow minimally invasive placement with less trauma. Offered in titanium and stainless steel for strength and biocompatibility. Position the patient supine, keeping the knee straight. Begin the diagnostics by measuring the anatomical axis and mechanical axis of the leg using the alignment rods. Placing the rod at the center of the femoral head, passing it through the center of the knee joint, patella, and center of the ankle joint under anteroposterior radiograph, angle of deflection is measured by determining the hinge point on the lateral cortex at the upper one-third proximal tibial head. Once the angle is determined, create a marking of osteotomy start point on the bone by placing threaded drill sleeve locked on the HTO plate. Position the osteotomy wire guide on the tibia according to the determined marking. Drill the 2.6 mm guide wires through the holes of the osteotomy wire guide. Once the guide wires are fixed, remove the osteotomy wire guide. Use power saw parallel of guide wires to cut through the medial side of the tibia. Keeping in mind not to cut through the lateral cortex of the tibia. Change the blade of power saw to smaller one to create biplanar cut keeping the patella tendon intact for stability. Hammer the osteotomy chisel blades into the opening to decrease the deflection. Add more osteotomy chisel blades of different sizes keeping in mind not to fracture the lateral cortex. Use an osteotomy bone spreader with osteotomy screwdriver to spread the bone to achieve the correct anatomical position. In the process, we can measure the angle of correction from the bar on the osteotomy bone spreader. Once the correct anatomical position is achieved, the osteotomy distractor helps to hold the bone position. Use osteotomy gap measuring device to determine the height of wedges. Place the HTO plate with two threaded drill sleeves locked onto it. Use a 4.3 mm drill bit to create the pilot hole through threaded drill sleeve at the proximal end of the plate. Keeping in mind, drill bit goes unicortical. Alternatively, use a 4.3 mm variable angle double drill guide to drill at a desired variable angle instead of fixed straight angle. After drilling, measure the depth by osteotomy depth gauge to determine the screw length. Insert the 5mm AV Weislock screw using star screwdriver shaft, T25 and 6.0 nm torque limiting handle.
Insert the 5 mm AVYS lock screws in the remaining proximal holes using the same process. Once all the proximal screws are fixed, use a 4.3 mm drill bit to create a hole through the variable angle double drill guide in D3 hole of the plate. After drilling, measure the depth by osteotomy depth gauge to determine the screw length. Insert the 5 mm AVYS lock screw using star screwdriver shaft, T25 and 6.0 nm torque limiting handle. Insert the 5 mm AVYS lock screws in the remaining distal holes using the same process. Add 3D scaffold wedges made of macroporous calcium phosphate to hold the gap and guide bone regeneration. Wedges also help to disperse the weight from the plate and act as an additional support. This completes the osteotomy surgery using HTO plate. Pain is managed with medication and swelling is reduced with elevation and cold packs. Dressings are kept clean and stitches are removed after about 2 weeks. Non-weight bearing is maintained for 4 weeks, then gradually progressed to full weight bearing as tolerated. Excessive valgus stress is avoided for the first 4 to 6 weeks. Physiotherapy is started early to restore motion. Quadriceps are strengthened, avoiding resisted open chain exercises initially. Progression is gradual. Return to sport is gradual, usually after 4 to 6 months, once strength, stability, and pain-free ROM are achieved. Follow-ups and x-rays monitor healing, full activities resume gradually over months.